there's a 0.5 version of the EOS gray mass voter tool. And um, I actually found this to be the most useful wallet. I personally found Scatter to be lacking in features and not as user friendly. Maybe they've improved upon it since. But for me, I use the gray mass voter tool. I think it is awesome. And they just released version 0.50 and I'll just go over a couple of the features that they added to this. The first one is what caught my eye and is actually why I'm making this video. There's permission management. So there's now a simple permission management interface that can be used within the tools section of the app to view your existing permissions. You can now view those and edit those. And you've got a contacts address book. There's a new setting, resources available versus resources used. But again, the reason why I am doing this video is to show you the permission management because I think that is great. And until this moment, I did not know of an easy way to manage permissions on an EOS key. By the way, download it from the GitHub account. This is github.com slash graymass, G-R-E-Y-M-A-S-S. -S. And so I installed that and here we are. So I'm going to actually do it live for you guys with my own account. This is Colin Talks Crypto, Colin T Crypto. This is my EOS account name made specifically for this show. And so I logged in, I unlocked my wallet using this little, it was a green lock icon. And this means that I can now use the account and basically sign transactions with my private key. So I could send funds and I could do things like modify my account permissions, which is what I'm gonna show you. So if you are like me and you have an account that you got from the Genesis mainnet snapshot, you will only have one key pair. You will only have one private key and you will only have one public key. And that will be your owner key. It will also serve as your active key. And in that case, it's really smart in my opinion to generate a new active key pair and add it to your account because you want to have the security of being able to use that owner key, which is supposed to be the highest permissioned key on your account, to be able to recover your account in the case that for some reason it gets compromised. But if you're using the same key pair as we are from that mainnet snapshot and your account gets compromised, well then you just, I think, lost your entire account. There's no way to prove your ownership because your ownership of your account was your entire account because that owner key is the same as your active key. You have no two keys, right? You should be trading with your active key. You should be doing all your transactions with your active key. And you should be tucking away that owner key in the advent that your account does get compromised. And so, for example, if you saw someone unstake the tokens from your account, let's say you had all your, your tokens staked, and there's that three-day lockup period, which is really great for security. And then let's say you're using EOS Authority's notification tool and you see and you get an email or a telegram notification that says your tokens have been unstaked. Okay, so from this point, you have three days because of that unstaking period to do something, to take action, to recover your account. Otherwise, if you didn't unstake those tokens and someone else did that, you will lose those tokens. You will not have those tokens in three days. So this is something you need to do before you get that email notification that your tokens have been unstaked. This is that worst case scenario. So in that case, what you would do is you would take your owner key and you would remove that active key to regain control of those tokens before that three day period is up. So you may be wondering, well, how do I get an active key if all I was given was an owner key? And I'll show you right here, it's extremely simple. So as I said, I unlocked my wallet and you'll see wallet tools and then you see permissions. And so you click on permissions and these are my public keys. So this is fine for you to see these. These are the public keys that go along with Colin T Crypto. And so you'll see that my owner permission key is the same as my active permission key. And we don't want that. If you have the same situation when you log into your gray mass EOS voter wallet and you have the same key here as you do here for your owner and active permissions, you're gonna wanna change that. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you need to generate a new key. So I'm gonna show you how to do it within this app, but you're gonna to wanna to do it offline. So they do have a key generator here under utilities, so click on that. And it says here, this key generator does not save these key pairs within the application. Please ensure you back up these keys in another location if you're planning on using them. Now, I believe them, but I still wouldn't trust them. <laughs> Let's put it that way because you just don't know what's on your computer. Maybe the app's totally legit, but maybe on your computer, there's some kind of a key sniffer or a key logger 
or it's, it's looking in the memory constantly, that kind of thing. So you don't want this private key to be exposed on your computer. For the sake of this demonstration, we're going to use it and I'll show you how easy this is. But what you're going to want to do is to go and get an offline key generator and then take that public address and come back and do what we're doing here. So you would have generated your private key offline and save it offline and it never touches the internet. And then you'll do the same steps we're going to do here with the public key, which is this one here. So you'll take your, your key that starts with EOS 5 or EOS 6 or whatever it starts with and that's the public address and you're going to take that and you're going to do what we do here. So right now this is what I would have printed and saved offline because it's secure and private and I don't want anyone to see this. But we're going to take this key. Um, I'm actually going to use one I generated offline. So I have the private key. I'm looking at it right now. But I'm going to use the public address equivalent of this right here. And we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it. So we're going to go over it's back to the permissions section. And it says here active permission. So we don't want to change our owner permission. We've already got that key, right? And it won't even let you. If you notice, there's no button for modifying there. So what you do is you click on modify and it gives you a bunch of warnings. So it shows us our current public key, which is the one we're going to change. It says the private key in this wallet will not automatically be replaced. By changing this key, you may need to reset your local wallet and re-import with new private keys. It says changing keys is a potentially dangerous action. After updating this permission, if you do not have access to the associated private key, you will lose access to this authority and potentially the account. And again, so they're, they're giving you a heads up, like if you hadn't saved that private key, you will not have access to your account. But either way, always save your private key. It's like Bible class in crypto. The private key is the ownership of the accounts. If you don't own the private key, you don't own the account. Save your private key, print it out, keep it offline, keep it safe, and then you don't have to worry about this. As long as you have that private key, you cannot fuck up. All right, so what we're gonna do here is basically just delete this, and then we're gonna paste our new public key and I'm going to click update permission and I'm doing this live with you guys. I haven't done this yet. Transaction submitted. So it looks like it's been submitted to the blockchain. Here's the transaction ID and um, let's go take a look at that. So we clicked on the transaction ID and here it is. It's showing my new public address key. So here it is in the blockchain. It's included in this block at this time and it's for my account here, Colin T Crypto. And it says, set the permission active with the parent permission owner to have the authentication. So there we go, guys. We just set it up with a new public and private key pair that we generated hopefully offline. And now let's go back to the application. And so we click close here. We saw that. And look at this. So now we have a different public address for our owner key than we do for our active key. We have a different key. You'll see it says EOS 4YG and here it's EOS 6UD. So now we have successfully changed the account permissions on our key. So now the thing you want to do is anytime you use this account, you want to be using the active permission because this is a slightly lower access level than owner. For example, if you lose control of the active permission, you can use the owner permission to reinstate the active key, to remove this key and to give yourself a new key. And if you had some unstaked tokens that you hadn't unstaked, you'd be using your owner key to take control of that. Um, assuming that it was the active key that got stolen. If you lose your owner key, I think you're screwed. So again, that's why I'm saying don't have the same key for both positions on the owner and active. Have a different key and don't ever use your owner key and don't ever expose the owner key, the private key to the internet. And that way you actually will have a fallback method. Okay guys, now for a very important part of the video. Notice that the wallet is still using the key that's the owner key and we don't want that. The whole purpose of us changing the key is so that we're always using the active key to perform functions. So how do we change it so that the EOS voter gray mass app is using the active permission instead of the owner permission? Um, I just tried to remove my account from the wallet and re-add it and it wouldn't let me. So what I'm gonna do is click reset application and it's going to destroy wallet credentials. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to re-add my account, Colin T Crypto, but this time when I add my account, I'm gonna give it the active key because I know that I have my owner key and my active key, private keys, both secure. And when I'm confident about that, I feel okay clicking this button. And it's saying, are you sure? And yes. So now I have just destroyed my access through the wallet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it up again to my account, Colin T Crypto look up account. Okay, it found it. So now we're going to enter the private active key. 
Now this is the one we just generated. This is the one we want the wallet to use. And that way your owner key never touches the wallet anymore. Okay, so I've typed in my private key. I've actually copy pasted it to make sure it's not messed up. And you can click here to show private key if you want to. And I'm enabling wallet signing operations because this is now my active key and I'm okay with that. And that way, if anything happens on my computer, if anyone takes my active key, I don't have to worry about it because I have a higher level security access key. And they have a really helpful thing right here where it says expecting a private key that matches one of the below keys. So it knows, it looked up and it knows that it should be one of these public keys. And in fact, it does because this top one here is my active key. So I'm gonna click compare keys and I'm gonna give it a wallet password. And it's asking us to re-enter the password for the local wallet. If you lose this password, it's not the end of the world as long as you have your private keys. Good, so I typed it in twice correctly and it matched. So they're having you agree to the constitution. Now we're logged in. Okay, so let's check this out. And it looks like it's already unlocked because I just typed in my password. We're gonna click on the tools and we're gonna click on permissions. And what do we have here? Look at this guys. So now our owner permission is not the one that this wallet's using. It is using the same key as our active permission. So we have successfully changed it so that this wallet is now using our active key to sign all transactions to perform all functions. It's using only the active key. And the owner key is completely offline because I have that somewhere completely separate from my computer and no one can touch my owner key. So it's really a two-step process. To summarize, the first step is to go to tools, the key generator, generate a new active key pair, change the active key pair under the permissions tab, and then you'll have two different keys. Then to reset the application, thereby destroying all the credentials on your computer, and you have of course your private keys offline, and you come back in and you reactivate your account on the app with your active key and not your owner key and that way it will have shifted over to using your active account key. Okay guys, hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you for watching. Be more secure and go EOS.